Boneheads was, uh, that was at Stetson Visual Services, and um, there was a lot of stuff we did for Coneheads. We did, um, we did of course, the, the main spaceship, which was the, you know, the larger model, which was about four feet across, or four, I'm trying to remember, I think the wingtip to wingtip was about three and a half, four feet, uh, and it was probably about, uh, about 30 inches tall. It was almost as tall as it was wide. Uh, we did that ship. We did um, uh, Remulac, the city of Remulac, uh, in miniature, and we also did another spaceship, a UFO spaceship that uh, comes down and picks up the family and and uh, takes them back to Remulac. I think it was just those two spaceships and Remulac were the were the primary uh, models that we did. And actually, one interesting story about the city was that. Um, the production designer on the film had used a lot of Libius Woods for his inspiration for the city. And they wanted to see all that. And uh, so uh, several model makers, Mike Possert being one of them, uh, I think I worked on a couple of buildings uh, when I was done with the spaceships, but uh, we built all these, most of them I think were built by Mike Possert and uh, a few of them by Paula Schneider. But they built all these really great looking beautiful buildings, uh, miniature buildings for Emulac that literally looked like li they had lifted uh, Libius Woods right off the page. Well, that was all great until the studio caught wind and found out that nobody had cleared that. And so uh, all these beautiful models of, of the city had to be severely altered and uh, because of they were afraid of being sued by Libius Woods. So, uh, so all these models went back and were torn apart and reconfigured to look less like Libius Woods, uh, which was unfortunate because they really, it looked spectacular with all the paint and everything. And they were, they were done and painted and, you know. So uh, that was, uh, that was Remulac. On the spaceships, um, uh, the, there was only one model built of the, uh, large model built of the Conehead One, and it was just shot multiple passes for, for to make up the fleet. Um, the uh, interior of the cockpit, we put a RP screen, a rear projection screen in there, so they could rear project um, uh, fo footage from first unit of them in the set of the cockpit. Uh, and then there was a hatch in the back. And actually, in the photos, one of the photos you can see when it's under construction, it's still primered. There's one area that's kind of white in the primer. That area was a removable panel, so they could literally stick the projector in the back and project the footage from from uh, pri from principal photography into the inside of this uh, inside of the cockpit. So there's a shot in the film where the ship comes flying by and you see uh, the cone heads inside the, the cockpit and that's just an all in camera shot with a rear projection screen. Um, but it was a vacuform model, you know, standard detailing with, uh, you know, model combination of model parts and scribe lines and panels. And, and at one point they came in and they said, well, the last shot of the film, we want the ship to land in a refinery. We want it to kind of blend into the to the, all the lights of the refinery, and they sent us all these reference photos, and they wanted all these lights all over the bottom of the ship. So we had to go back and put all these lights in. I think I put in over 200 lights, little grain of wheat lights, all on the bottom of the ship. And, and so when this thing was landing, it just looked like part of the refinery, and then of course as it comes further into light, you see that it's the, the whole ship. Um, so that was built. It had stepper-driven motors for the uh, for the guns, so the guns would slide forward and rotate, and, um, and practical lighting in the RP screen. And um, that was shot over at MHG over in Hollywood, uh, which is famous for doing all of uh, Star Trek: Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. In fact, we had to move Deep Space Nine out of the way so that we could shoot the Conehead ship. Uh, uh, Tony Meininger's beautiful miniature of, uh, of Deep Space Nine was, was uh, on the stage and we had to move it off to one side. So uh, It was not a very big place, so <laughs> we were dancing around Deep Space Nine trying to shoot uh, Conehead One. So The other version of that ship that I built was a smaller version for, for the Remulac uh, uh, base for the, where they come in and land on Remulac. And, it was a whole landscape of the city that uh, uh, in the foreground started out as wood blocks painted different colors. Uh, and then uh, that slowly transpired into a little more detailed buildings. Then we got into the really nice formerly Libius Woods buildings with uh, sort of a central hub building. And uh, dispersed around that were all these little pockets in the floor 
with stepper driven motors and there was a bunch of these guys sitting on those stepper driven motors and what would you, as you're flying through the city these things would be coming up and twisting as if they're getting ready to, you never actually see them fly away you just saw them coming up as if they're lifting off to fly away and so we had two or three of those and then i think they shot we shot uh, the full-size version, we shot some post shots of it flying away and put those in the background uh, in the shot. As you got further back, uh, were just literally foam core cutouts that were painted to look like buildings. And then there was uh, fiber fill hanging over that uh, with lights in the, in the fiber fill to create lightning effects. And then uh, behind that was a sculpture of uh, Conehead Mountain, which literally looked like a giant cone head uh, that Tully Summers sculpted. And that was sitting in the very back, and then behind that was a backdrop. I'd say overall depth, the set was probably about 30 feet deep, and probably about 30 or so deep wide, uh, 30 feet wide. And it was shot all motion control. Um, and uh, for the foreground, we pulled in uh, uh, dry ice, you know, dry ice to, to get that fog effect, and that would blend in with the, uh, so it looked like you're coming out of the clouds um, and looking into the city, and then. You know, that was all done in camera. You know, there was, there was really, I don't think, other than maybe addition of, uh, of a comp of a cone head ship flying through frame, I think that entire shot was all in camera. It was all one shot. So that was a, that was a neat thing to see. Uh, and that was all shot out over at um, VIFX, Video Image, 